Hello, everybody. This is the Doctor Strange Fall Sunrise Treasury Edition. So, Treasury because it's much bigger. Um, I think, though, that in this picture, the color looks a little less vibrant. Maybe not. Maybe just a shinier cover. Um, but hey, so the, the short story is, I read this one. I thought it was okay. Love the Tradmore stuff. Knew they were going to do a treasury edition of it. Uh, and, you know, just decided to stop. And then when I saw, like, other friends talk about it, they're like, you know, different levels of, it's beautiful, but I don't know what's going on. And so I don't know that I cared not to know what was going on, especially when I knew I was going to buy this guy. So I have the single issues out. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll pop in and flip through and just see if there's any like corrections or art or something. I doubt there will be some more point out, but let's flip through this. And there's a good chance, hey, that if everyone tells me it sucks, this is the way I'm gonna read it. I'm just gonna take a look at it. <laughs> and I do plan to read it at some point, but um, really if you're, what you're really here for is, is this man right here. And also his wife, who is the, the colorist. And the colorist, the coloring I think is very important in a Tradmore book. So, what is that, the back cover? Ah, well that's gonna be weird. Are we gonna get, are we gonna get inverted? Oh, I hope we get an M&M ad. Or a Wakanda Forever ad. But, uh, so we get, you know, the front cover and the back cover is the side here. Chris Weidman is about to fight, so. Um, I may not be giving you my full attention. There may be a random pause in here. So this is what I did read, and I will agree with everyone that didn't make too much sense, but it was, it was pretty beautiful, very distinct style that Tradmore has that I, I'm really happy that I'm not the only one that likes it. I mean, th I think there's a good chance that this, these kind of styles will be, um, you, uh, that can be easily hated by certain people, maybe like a Peach Momoko type thing, but Tradmore has never been like the cover artist, right? But where some other, um, some other artists really just are that, uh, and then they're, you know, they, they didn't get their start in the interior, so you got to have a lot more respect. I think I remember this. I think I remember going, oh, that's going to be a lot better in the Treasury Edition. Because look how tiny, you know, he's, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 individual pictures there, actually, right? So you can imagine that that would have been um, obnoxious to read. Do we see that fire? So, I'm not going to do this every time, but... Is what it looks like in the in the regular book. Uh, see, it's a little bit smaller. I guess there's no, I guess there isn't any um, word uh, any word bubbles or anything like that. So there we go. Basically, he's just traveling through some, you know, his weirdness, and this gives uh, an excuse for Trad Moore to draw things in his uh, own weird sort of style like you know what is is that the ocean <laughs> is that the orange ocean are they mountains what's going on what's what's dr strange flying over i don't know it looks cool that's why i double dip for a comic that uh that you know i may eventually read um nice little contrast there going right to the green i feel like there's a little more less detail than what we've just seen um bong <laughs> let's see here uh, very beautiful. So we're not. We're still at the. We're still at the issue that I read, and I actually don't even remember a lot of this. This reminds me of. This reminds me of the character in uh, Silver Surfer Black that he drew. That actually just ended up being Noel or being protecting Noel, Noel's like cage or whatever. Um, see, I don't know what you guys think about this, um, but but I think if. I think that if I was oh, trying to describe this for a, like if I were doing a, a art, some art school thing or something that, you know, I'd be like, oh, this is a mess. I don't know what's going on. My eye doesn't know where to go. You know, it's, it's like a terrible ad, but then also there's enough going on, enough action that maybe, you know, maybe this deserves me sitting here and looking at it for a lot longer and, and, and gleaning story from the action. Uh, which is something you don't always do when you're reading a monthly comic, right? Or we have this big stack and we we flip through them. So there's an even messier page uh, that I showed um, when I showed the comic haul of getting this. 
and uh, and I thought man, there's just like a lot to look at there. You know, I I think there's a I think you I think there's an argument for the you know the coloring being too much of one color or one shade, but then again, you know, the, a lot of a lot of what makes this art so great is um, is the choice of coloring, and then the way his pencils are sort of a great vessel for a good colorist. You know, I'd imagine. He draws this, and since it's his wife, they uh, sort of work together. Um, you know, I'm sure Heather Moore's a great colorist in her own in her own right, but there's you know there's something about like well, having the penciler and the person who's drawing it and writing it next to you and going, did you want these darker blues? Do we want them this shade? Um, so we'll see. Uh, there's another contrast. I, one thing I noticed when I did a even quicker flip through. Uh, and I pointed out for the last issue, as you see that like orangish, and then you have a couple pages of green, and you uh, really feel it. These are just so, these are just so beautiful. You know, the pages are so beautiful, and they're so busy. But then he also has a very like simple-ish style, right? Um, well, I guess that's not. It's a lot of detail there. So you, I mean, he could just switch over at any time, I guess. Uh, I guess we're in a, a mode where we're just floating around. I forget what they call that state did it in the movies. And Doctor Strange did it 9,000 times in the comics. Um, so here we go. It's, uh, interesting there. So this is the second issue. I'm sure this is the part where, I, where people were like, I still don't know what's going on. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Chapter 5, The Witness. Did we get a, did we get a cover? Is this number 2? No, it's number three. Did we get a cover for issue two? Once we got there, let's take a look real quick. Uh, oh yeah, we got a cover. Okay. No M&M ad. But for those that are very disappointed that this is a, not a treasury that is a, uh, a facsimile. You know, you're gonna have to, you're, you missed out on the M&M ad, guys. Um, well, this is probably not the best layout or or drawings, but um, so flipping through this and now being in the part of the story where I haven't read, I, it sort of surprises me that there's not a discernible story here, or at least that people I trust um, didn't read one, because things seem to be happening, and maybe that's the argument. Things are happening, we just don't know what. Here's that messy page I was sort of talking about, but I think it looks great here. Um, all kinds of different Dr. Stranges for whatever reason. Uh, you know, we got some like hellscape looking stuff here. So, uh, I, I mean, I don't even know how you pencil this though without knowing what the colors are gonna be, right? Like buying these pencils, if they exist as just pencils on paper, you're probably just gonna look even like really messy. Absolutely needed the colors there. Let's see if we get some contrast. We got some red. Let's see if we, we get a big change like we did earlier. Uh-oh. Satan-like character. There we go. These Doctor Strange covers have uh, give him a very effeminate look. That he doesn't necessarily look like inside, um, but just the way, the uh, just the way his the way he's holding his hands and the way he's doing it's very uh, different look. So this is where, I mean, I'm really here for like the psychedelic stuff like this. And this is probably the easiest stuff for him to, to draw. Uh, you know, it just takes a little bit. I've heard other artists talk about like, you know, Silver Surfer and then being in space, like not having to draw buildings and cars and backgrounds. Oh, you just get to do a space background over and over again. So we'll see. And see, this looks like a lot of action. So, I mean, I probably actually will sit and read this, but this will be something that I flip through a bunch because it doesn't seem... Part of it did, I guess, but this issue at least doesn't seem too uh, intense as far as words. Like you got to just sit, sit with what's going on in in these uh, panels, and it's a lot is going on in these panels to really respect it. But floating around, like you know, I, I get this hunger to actually sit and read it, and uh, and to give this more time than what you know happens in a YouTube video like I'm doing now. There's some contrast there. Switch to pink. Now we're in bubble gland. We're in bubblegum land, guys. You know, and you always wonder, like, when people have a particular style, did they just fall into this style? Is this the only way they know how to draw? Um, you know, 
can they draw in that super realistic way? And then, you know, do we want them to? Like, is this, this is who they are? Like, definitely you don't want Trad more to, but I think that, I think that often. I remember when I read Mouse, you know, at, at first I was like, man, this isn't, like, talent-wise, this isn't real good. And, you know, and that obviously, for I guess for a lot of people, I was definitely one of them. Arch, that was my first of anything I read of Arch uh, Spiegelman. Um, but then within Mouse, there's some old comic that he had written, you know, completely different style. So, you know, he definitely had that sort of uh, transitional, transformational talent. Uh, but he chose to draw one way. Mignola's the other way, which I pointed out in the comic hall, right? And so I wonder what Trad Moore's shtick is, because you don't really want him to stop drawing like this. Um, uh, but, you know, it's one of those things, though, where I don't think anyone else can draw like him, or else it... or or at least it would look completely different. Like if you're trying to do this psychedelic sort of weird thing, you know, are we in the last issue here? One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's the fourth one right there. I was gonna open these and see if they were different at all. I doubt they are because, it, you know, this was in the, uh, I mean, this came out like weeks after the fourth issue came out. So it's not one of those things where someone wants to fix something or or improve on, on the way something looks. As far as I know, maybe one day Tradmore will say that they did do that. Let's see, there's not that many words here. Oh, he feels the leg. Sometimes the colors really take over these pages though. Like, in a page like this, what's going on? I mean, is he trying to make, this one seems a little bit overly simple or something that is, you know, that is not, that when Trad Moore's in a rush almost, you know? So this is the fourth issue though, and he had a schedule to meet. So I don't know, I don't know. Don't these seem a little less, like a little less is going on in these backgrounds and stuff when you compare like some of these other pages. I mean, there's a schedule thing, right? That's just a schedule thing, I guess. But this fourth and final issue does seem a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, less detailed than I'm used to. Oh, great binding there. I'm happy about that. Look what's going on here, though. I say that, though, and then he does, then he goes, yeah, dude, I'm doing a six, six by three. So I'm doing an 18 page, doing a 30, then I do a 36 page, um, a 36, uh, yeah, panel, couple of pages. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, I think I'm going to read this, actually. Flipping through this just makes me way hungrier to read this and in this treasury edition. And it doesn't seem like there's, you know, those early issues seem like they were he was talking a lot and didn't make any sense. But, hey, at this point, like, do you even want it to make sense? I don't. You know, I just want to take mushrooms and read this book. Let's see what happens here. And then we get some big, nice big pages. He seemed... It seemed like that fourth, fourth issue was uh, was strategized a little bit more. Um, oh, I didn't know there was a Daniel Warren Johnson variant. It's hard to like not choose whenever it's an art. So Daniel Warren Johnson is a good example. Like for Daniel Warren Johnson book, I don't want a non-Gen Daniel Warren Johnson page. And Trad Moore is sort of the same way. But this is this is pretty cool, actually. So maybe we'll maybe we'll go look for that on eBay or something. Actually, the David Mack. I'm sort of like done with a lot of David Max style, even though I like it, but that one looks really good. So Ian Bertram, oh, he's got all my favorite, all my favorite artists did something here. I think I do have this Momoko one floating around. Ron, Ron Lim, you can never do bad with Ron Lim, but what is this, computerized? It's a little too modern looking to me to be, I would not guess that was Ron Lim. Um, Chris Anka. Chris Anka and this, and this girl, this uh, Paulina, a good new show. They sort of have a, uh, they sort of have in their own way, their own little trad more, little feel. So I wonder what they've done. So Chris Anka, I have to make a note because I don't know those names very well. Then uh, Chase Conley. So there you go. That is it in full. The Doc Doctor Strange Falls Sunrise by Trad Moore and Heather Moore Treasury Edition. It is beautiful. I reconvinced myself to read this now by just flipping through it. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys next time.